Well, hey there, greetings to you, and welcome to this week uh, of Journey, our online Bible study. And so uh, I want to say a word of welcome and gratitude for your participation and uh, tuning in this week. Uh, if you have been here before, welcome back. If you are new, uh, welcome. Uh, and to either of you, <laughs> uh, we have uh, all of these cataloged on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel uh, and soon to be on our website. But if you're looking for some of the lessons we've done previously, I would invite you, and, and if you feel have time and feel led, to go back and look at some of those and look at some of the ways we've spent time together already as we journey through some of the, um, the stories of Scripture and how they relate to our journey now. And this week we begin a new scriptural journey uh, in the books of First and Second Samuel. We're going to be spending 10 weeks uh, beginning today looking at these, uh, these narratives of uh, the kingdom uh, stories of Israel and beginning with the character of Samuel and looking at some of the lessons we can learn from that uh, story even today and those stories. And so uh, today is a little more of an introduction and kind of looking at some of the, the context that brings us into this, uh, this series, uh, more, more so than it is a deep dive into the, the study of, of the particular scripture today. Uh, but as I said, we're going to be exploring this story and these, this narrative and these kind of connected stories over 10 weeks. So we'll have lots of time to, to dive deeply into this. Um, but uh, I would invite you, if you have not taken time uh, to explore the, the, the books of First and Second Samuel, because um, we're not going to read all of that story, I mean, all of that, um, those books, we would take some time and begin reading through them from the very beginning. We're actually starting uh, a little bit into the book of 1 Samuel. So uh, this would be a good chance this week to begin reading the first several chapters of that, uh, catch up to where we are now in chapter 8, and see or hear some of the background and context of what brings us to this point today. But let me offer for us a word of prayer and a word of just pause and centering and prepare uh, preparation as we prepare uh, to spend this time with one another, but ultimately with God to uh, consider more deeply what God's Word and Scripture is saying to us in our journey today. So, as we do uh, in this journey, study, uh, take a deep breath wherever you are and take a moment of pause and of just relaxing and catching up with yourself. And then we'll say a word of prayer and, and dive in. Please pray with me. O loving God, who has shown up over and over again over the history of this world in ways unexpected, ways expected, ways that we could imagine, ways that we have yet to imagine. Thank you for stories like the one we are beginning to explore today. Characters like Samuel and Saul and David and the people of Israel and all those that we will reflect on and how their stories and our stories are linked and the ways that those stories are still speaking to us today and that you are quite clearly still speaking to us every day. Help us to be more in tune and attuned to the way that you are speaking to us and help us to follow you in ways that sometimes seem confusing or challenging or, diff or, or, uh, or scary even. Help us to be your people in all ways and help us to feel your love and share it always. And all this we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So as I mentioned, uh, we are spending 10 weeks in First and Second Samuel. Uh, and I wanted to spend a little bit of time today uh, giving a little bit of an overview, not, not a full overview, but just some, some background, some context. Uh, we have a pretty long scripture reading for today. I'm not actually going to read all of that. Uh, I want uh, to invite you to take some time to read that at your own pace. Uh, but I'll point to some things there. But uh, give you a sense of where we are in the scope of, of scripture. Um, so we're in the Old Testament. Uh, and we are in this section um, uh, kind of called the kingdoms. Uh, in fact, in the Greek, uh, there is these four books. 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings are actually known as the four kingdoms, one, two, three, and four, talking about that very thing, these monarchies that are established, these kingdoms. So we're looking at the book of uh, First and Second Samuel, which was initially, originally, it was one book. 
um, but due to scroll length and other things, it was divided into these two books that we know, but they're telling more than the story of Samuel. Uh, it's a bit of a misnomer to call them both first and second Samuel because they're not only about Samuel's story. In fact, Samuel uh, dies in this story before the end of first Samuel is complete. And we start uh, spending time focused on characters like Saul, the first king of Israel, and David, uh, the one whose story we really have been moving toward all of this time up till now, and then whose line we follow uh, moving forward beyond this point. Uh, and so lots of uh, kind of shared narrative with some important voices and characters in this book uh, named after Samuel, who we spend time with, uh, the prophet, the priest, uh, and the judge. We'll get to all those things. So in the history of Israel, um, very briefly, a very flyover uh, overview, uh, as they have uh, you know, escaped uh, you know, the exodus out of Egypt and escaped oppression there, uh, wandered in the wilderness, found their way to Mount Sinai, uh, and have made this covenant with God uh, before entering the promised land. And it is kind of this covenant from with God uh, to kind of be God's people and to be faithful to God uh, and, you know, to recognize God's faithfulness to them uh, that moves them into the promised land and helps them establish themselves uh, in a divided way as the 12 tribes of Israel. And over the course of time, what we see represented uh, in the book of Judges, for instance, is the way that these uh, tribes, these individual uh, collectives of people of Israel were kind of governed or overseen by judges. Uh, and so what we read in those stories before we get to 1 Samuel is this kind of cycle of judges we see where there are these folks who are continuing to try to point uh, the people of Israel back to God and to, to faithfulness to God, but the people of God keep falling away um, and out of that favor and out of that faithfulness and not good things happen, and they have to cycle back to saying, okay, okay, we get it, we, we should have been faithful, and they, they are for a while, and then they aren't, and they are, and they aren't, and the cycle that keeps on and on. And these judges who are trying uh, to bring order to the chaos uh, and lead these people, but in a scattered way, in a divided way, until we get to the last of the judges, which is Samuel. As so we get to this book, and... Um, First Samuel actually begins not with Samuel himself, but with Samuel's mother, with uh, the story briefly of Hannah uh, and the song or the poem of Hannah, the story of kind of grief and hope and uh, hope for her child that he would be faithful to God and this important figure in what God's work is in the world. And sure enough, we get this character who is Samuel, who not only is the last of these judges, but he turns out to also be uh, what some describe as the first prophet, uh, those kind of speaking on behalf of God, speaking uh, truth to power uh, on behalf of God, uh, and trying to be the mouthpiece of God in the world in this particular way. Uh, and in addition to that, Samuel is also a priest. Um, you know, priests were the only ones allowed to do uh, certain things in uh, the nation of Israel, um, and he was one who was doing some of those, and so uh, indicated that in that way by uh, him being a priest. And so you have Samuel, this, this judge, this priest, this prophet, who is this transitional character in the story of the Old Testament between this uh, divided kind of tribal Israel and the cycle of judges toward this unified uh, kingdom, this unified monarchy uh, that begins this kingdom narrative beginning uh, not with Saul, but really Saul's appointing of, uh, uh, sorry, not Saul, Samuel, and Samuel's appointing of Saul as the first king of Israel. And then there's a lot of uh, interesting narrative to this story from that point forward of uh, power uh, and characters uh, finding power, rising to it, and then it overcoming them, corrupting them, and then their fall from grace, uh, and the cycle that kind of shows in that way too. So there's really so much to explore. I mean, 10 weeks sounds like a lot, uh, and it is, but um, there is a lot packed into First and Second Samuel, not to mention uh, the two kingdom books that follow, First and Second Kings, uh, but our 10 weeks are dedicated to the book of Samuel that is divided First and Second.
So that's, like I said, in a, in a very general nutshell, to kind of overview the context of where we are uh, and kind of fulfilling this Deuteronomic history, is what they call it, of getting to this point where David uh, is uh, kind of finally recognized as the one we've kind of been working toward and then setting up this line of succession from there to the one we are ultimately waiting for. Um, and so moving from all these different kinds of leaders from the time of Moses to these judges and tribal leaders to now uh, a kingdom and what that looks like. So that's what our uh, story for today, our lesson for today comes from, or is, is all about. It's, it's, this is 1 Samuel chapter 8. As I mentioned, we're already eight chapters into the book of 1 Samuel when we're starting this lesson. So I would encourage you as you have time to go back to the very beginning and read that story of Hannah and read um, some of these other things that are happening uh, before we even ever get to um, the story of, of Samuel and the people of Israel asking for a king. Now we are in, as I mentioned, 1 Samuel chapter 8, and this is verses 1 through 22. Uh, so that's a lot of verses um, that I don't necessarily want to take time and just read kind of to you. I'd rather you take time and us to take time and, and read through it ourselves. Uh, but I will point out to us um, kind of towards the end of that, uh, the kind of key verse, which is, but the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, we are determined to have a king over us so that we also may be like other nations, that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Um, and that's really uh, kind of capturing the essence of this story. And to give some context there, uh, Samuel, as I mentioned, is the end of this line of judges. And he is, at the beginning of this story, um, he has appointed his sons, he's named his sons judges over Israel to continue this tradition of, of these judges. Um, but his sons did not really follow in his ways. I mean, Samuel was, uh, was willing to do the work of being this uh, appointed figure for God to be this judge, and his sons were not. Uh, and so they, they kind of turned away from that. They... Um, the scripture says they took bribes and perverted justice. And that's not what you want in people who are supposed to be representatives of, of God and leading the people. And so partly because of that, uh, in large part, but also um, because of the way the people of Israel were seeing all of these other nations that were forming, um, you know, the, one of the, the, care, the nations we'll hear about is the, you know, the Philistines and and some of the others that are, have been a part of this, you know, we've, we have the story of the Babylonians and all these other nations. And the people of Israel were kind of recognizing, you know, they all have this primary rule. They have this king and it seems to be going well for them. You know, maybe that's what we need to lead us forward. We have had this troubled history. We're ready to move forward in a way that helps bring us success and prominence and, and, and goodness and providence. Maybe that's what we need. And so the elders of Israel come together and they say to Samuel, um, you're old, <laughs> to put it bluntly. This is verse five of chapter eight. You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to govern us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord and the Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of, up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so that also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So God is saying, when Samuel goes to, to God to say, look, the, the people, they, they're not listening to me. You know, they're, I'm trying to continue this line of faithful judges and they don't want that and they want this king and I don't think that's a good idea for all kinds of reasons. Uh, God, what should I do? And, and I'm paraphrasing wildly here. Uh, but God says to Samuel, give them what they want, but give them the warning from me that this isn't going to go the way they think it will. And that ultimately what has to happen is their faithfulness to me as I continue to be faithful to them. And it only works fully when there's a uh, this kind of recipro reciprocal, uh, this reciprocity and this mutuality of that being faithful. God is constantly faithful. God's people are those who keep moving in and out of that. 
And finding this earthly king is not going to be the thing that is their answer. But let them learn the hard way. Let them see uh, that this isn't going to go the way they think it will. So um, Samuel repeated all these things to them. And so I'm not going to read all of this, but uh, beginning at verse 10 and chapter 8, so Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. And he said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. And here's just an example. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. He will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, some to plow his ground, to reap, implements of war, equipment for chariots, take your daughters to do this and that, and the other perfumers and cooks and bakers. He'll take the best of your, your fields, your grain, your harvest, your vineyards, your olive, all of these things. He'll take a tenth of everything that you've asked for or that you have. Um, he'll make slaves out of um, well, he'll take your male and female slaves and, and the best of what you have and put them to his work, uh, and on and on and on. And he goes on at the end to say, And in the day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. Um, and there's this kind of this really intense warning of, look, all, all these things are going to happen to you, not for you, when you appoint this king, and you're going to cry out to God, and God's not going to answer you that day, at least not in the way you are expecting. Um, but the people, verse 19, as we already mentioned, refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. Uh, and so uh, the Lord uh, told Samuel to, to do this thing, to appoint them a king. Uh, and he goes on to appoint Saul, who becomes the first king of Israel. And the story of Saul, which we will get into in weeks to come, uh, has a rise and seems to be going okay. Uh, but then all of these things that Samuel is warning them about become true. Um, and all of these things uh, that are corrupting about power uh, corrupt Saul, um, corrupt the people around him, and ultimately he has a pretty awful demise and death. Uh, and when we see the rise through the story of Saul, there's it's kind of these arches that are overlapping of the rise of Saul and the rise of David within that, uh, with David's peak coming after Saul's death as the new king of Israel. So we see Samuel kind of setting all of this up for us on behalf of God, transitioning the people from tribes to, to unified nation, unified monarchy, unified kingdom, appointing Saul with this kind of um, asterisk beside all of that saying, okay, but I'm going to tell you I told you so at some point. And we spend this time thinking about what does, first of all, good leadership actually look like? And what are the qualities of leadership when we're considering leaders who are supposed to be upholding the way of God? What does that leadership look what should that look like? And the other things like uh, what happens when we, rather than try to listen to the ones who are showing us the truth and the way and show us what God is intending for us, what, if, what happens when rather we look to somewhere else and say, ah, but the grass is greener over there, and if only we had what they had, if only we had a king because they do, then we'll be good. What happens when that is separate from what God is choosing for you and for the people uh, around you. These are some of the lessons we explore in this. And, and what does it mean for us to uh, consider an uncertain future and try to ask the right question of what does it mean to follow God and to walk with God better, not just look for better things to make our lives better outside of God. And so we look at these stories to help us think about just some of those things, but so many other uh, parts of, of our story. And so looking at, um, you know, what it is that we learn from ancient stories like these, that we know we are prone to fall short of God's ideal for us. I mean, that's something we saw in the book of Judges and the cycle there of these stories of kings and throughout Scripture, and still that's true. And so... You know, Samuel wasn't going to keep the people from falling short, um, but was trying to keep them from uh, doing it as much as possible. <laughs> uh, 
And so God wanted them to see that even um, the kind of ruler that they would want to have is not the answer if that ruler, especially if that ruler is uh, himself, in this case himself, uh, not following the ways of God either. That the way to, you know, prosperity, so to speak, and to success and to goodness and fullness and faithfulness ourselves is to be faithful to God, even in positions of leadership. That as kings or rulers or leaders or whoever it is, that in order to do that fully and rightly and with justice, remember the beginning of this talked about Samuel's sons perverting justice, to do the other side of that and to make justice good and right and to do and to follow justice is to follow the ways of God. And so God blesses us with grace and new opportunities all the time to grow in faithfulness. And sometimes it's through learning through our own experiences as God's people. And say, I'll give you a chance to do this, you know, the way that you want to, but you're going to need to know that it's going to fall short if, if it's not in following what it is I desire for you. So I hope that over all this time, um, we can look back on these stories, think about what does it mean to be a group of people who follow God, but also think about the characters and qualities of, of leadership and to be people, whether it's uh, as we're part of an organization with a leader and we think about what that means, or we ourselves are put in positions of leadership or power or whatever else. But what does it mean to be a, not a, an earthly king uh, and leadership and to follow the ways of, of corruption and, and perverting justice, but to follow the ways of divine rule and leadership and to follow the ways of Jesus to be the kind of leaders that bring goodness by being faithful to God. So I'll see you uh, next week. We'll continue for these next nine weeks after this as we look at these stories of First and Second Samuel. Uh, I hope you will take time this week to read through some of these stories. Uh, to begin jotting down some of your own thoughts and questions and connections, uh, and to start thinking about uh, what does faithfulness mean? Uh, what does leadership look like and what should it? And what are the ways that we ourselves and we, God's people, fall short when we fail to follow the ways of God and God's faithfulness to us? And how then can we um, do it the other way? Last thing I'll say is, um, as always, there are resources available to do continue, to do further study. Uh, some of those are in the forms of like a PDF with some really interesting notes and resources and, and information. Um, but also this week, as I did last week, share a video with you um, from an organization called The Bible Project. And they have these really great uh, overview videos and then also in-depth study videos. Uh, and I'm going to provide the link to the overview video of First, uh, of first and Second Samuel but primarily 1 Samuel uh, here and give you a chance to look at what that, what that is uh, to get a further kind of uh, grasp of the context of this story. So as I can make those available to you, please use them and reach out to me for them. Uh, but the link to the YouTube video will be in the comments. And I uh, look forward to our 10 weeks of First and Second Samuel together. Go in peace and may God's faithfulness shine upon you always.